Blade, it is time for my favorite feature of the month. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's even surpassing Backtracks as my favorite feature to do every month on this channel, and that is Bargain Bag, my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures uh, in the form of two mystery CD grab bags that I get from Skips Records and CD World every month. Hey, $2.99 for seven CDs. You don't know what you're getting until you open it, but that's the fun of it, honestly. So uh, yeah, I opened two of these right here in front of the camera, uh, not knowing what's in them. And in between those two bags, I review a CD that you're liable to find in a bargain bin or that I have found in a bargain bin in the past. But first, as always, I'm going to go over the CDs that I found in the last pair of bargain bags. And it is, as most months are, it's mostly crap, uh, a few keepers, you know, it's kind of par for the course with these bargain bags. One of these days, though, I hope to get a bargain bag that's got a whole lot of good stuff in it. I, I just, I have faith that I eventually will, okay? But uh, yeah, okay, now, and as always, I forget to mention this, but if anybody out there wants any of the CDs that I'm casting off out of this bunch, uh, let me know in the comments below or in a direct message on Twitter. Uh, you'll find my Twitter link in the description below. Uh, just give me your address, I will mail them to you. I won't even ask you for postage. You don't even have to pay, unless you really want to pay me postage. You know, whatever. I just love sharing music, uh, especially when it's music that I've gotten tired of or didn't like at all to begin with. Uh, for instance, these first couple. Now, okay, I know everybody's going to be clamoring for these. Just, you know, keep things civil. I'll pick a name at random if, you know, everybody out there asks for them. All of my 50 subscribers will probably want this. Yeah. Honestly, it's... It, what you see is what you get with this one, honestly. It's, it's yeah. Uh, oh, and here's the the other one. <laughs> Extreme for Jesus. I don't think I even bothered listening to this one. You know, um, praise and worship music in general is not my thing, and this just looks like the high-octane evangelical praise and worship stuff. So, uh, yeah. Uh, then we have uh, Caribbean Rhythms. Uh, it has Caribbean Rhythms on it. <laughs> I'm as surprised as you are. But uh, yeah, hey, if you like Caribbean stuff, uh, let me know. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, Pan Spirits is the name of the band. Yeah, so, but yeah, it's probably fine for what they do. It just wasn't my thing, honestly. I can, you know, a, a little Caribbean music goes a long way with me, really. And it's kind of like reggae, you know, a little reggae goes along with me, a long way with me. Then we have uh, Dale and the Dragons. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's super cheesy. I, I put notes on the back of the CDs reminding me what they're like. Uh, yeah, it's super cheesy music, but I mean, the, the little write-up on the back here is it's kind of a heartfelt sentiment. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of cheesy stuff. I can't even remember what uh, I should have put what t kind of music is on here. It's probably singer-songwriter folk kind of stuff. And then we have, and I should have looked up on the internet, what is the name of the artist and what is the name of the album, because I'm still not sure. Uh, I had plenty of opportunities to look on the internet. I was just too lazy and forgetful to. Uh, lost Wire Transfer, People Who Must. Uh, People Who Must is in bold on, this, on the spine, so I'm guessing that's the name of the band. But yeah, this is basically the uh, Gin Blossoms sound alike. So if you like, you know, the jangle rock from the mid-90s, Gin Blossoms, that kind of stuff, you like this. Yeah. As I said, if you want it, let me know. Then we have some hip-hop here, uh, mid-90s hip-hop. Fundamental is the name of the group. You know, okay, they, they sound good enough at what they do. It's just not my thing as is usually the case with a lot of this stuff. So yeah, if you like mid-90s hip-hop, let me know. And then we have The Throws. They were a, a jangle rockish type of stuff. Uh, possibly Christian. Some of the lyrics in some of the songs lean Christian. Um, to their credit, they're not, they hit you over the head kind of Christian stuff. So, but yeah, you know, just, I just wasn't captivated by it. Uh, so yeah, if you want this good jangle rock, uh, Kind of like People Who Must, I guess, you know, sort of mid-90s? Mid yeah, 1995. And then we have some R&B stuff. Uh, Efwa is the name of this artist. Uh, and this was mid-90s? It's too small for me to read. Uh, yeah, black, black text over brown background. <laughs> Not bright, but anyway. <laughs> Efwa is the name of this uh, artist. Uh, pretty good. I think, if I can recall, it has some New Jack Swing in it, so uh, I don't know, Shyok might like this. Uh, but don't hold me to that. Uh, but yeah. Okay, but not my thing. I can, yes, I can stop saying that because I'm saying that with pretty much every CD. 
uh, Illusion. This is a girl group from the late 90s, I believe, 1990, yeah, 1999. Uh, R&B girl group. So if you like that, uh, yeah, let me know. Illusion was the name of the band. Uh, Think About It was the name of the album. So. And we're getting closer to the ones that I'm going to keep. There were only a couple that I wanted to keep. This band, Symposium, this is a five-song EP. And I described them here as half Green Day and half Linkin Park. So kind of a, a blend between new metal and punk-ish. So, yeah. And we have Jacked Post Grunge Meh. That's, what I, that's actually what I wrote on the back here. Uh, the singer has kind of a raspy voice, which sounds like it's probably an affectation, which kind of takes... it's kind of distracting almost the, the way he does it. But yeah, Jacked is the name of the band. Um, this is late 90s, I believe. And then the last of the rejects uh, from me was Sleeper. It's a rock band. Uh, I wrote on here, they're a No Doubt wannabe. So they're kind of like No Doubt, but a little bit more straightforward rock than they, than No Doubt had kind of funk and hip-hop influences mixed in, I guess. But uh, yeah, they're kind of like No Doubt, as I said, but the lead vocalist doesn't have nearly the presence or talent that Gwen Stefani had, so they just, they really fell flat for me. You know, if, if she had a little bit more uniqueness, I might have wanted to keep this, but yeah. 1996, uh, The It Girl is the name of the album, Sleeper is the name of the band. So. And then down to the two that I wanted to keep out of this bunch. Uh, Fruitcake is the name of the band, and this is uh, How to Make It is the name of the album. Uh, sort of semi-proggy. Uh, some of the tracks are instrumental, some of them have vocals in it. Uh, it empl they employ some vintage synths on it, which which gave it kind of a unique sound. I'm going to keep this and give it several more listens. It just it, it sounds kind of kind of unique. And what is it from uh, 1994? So and it's an indie label. So yeah, I, I kind of like them. Uh, give them a try if you kind of like the semi quasi prog type of stuff. And then the other one that I wanted to keep is kind of an EDM sort of thing. Snow Cone is the name of the band. Uh, Stay at Home Rockstar is the name of the album. It's kind of a cool name. And yeah, these guys have a lot of cool beats in it, uh, very dance-oriented stuff. Uh, really, really, really cool stuff. Uh, some of those tracks are like six, you know, five, six, seven minutes long. But the, yeah, they, they kind of bring to mind uh, Fat Boy Slim, uh, to a lesser degree, uh, Chemical Brothers maybe. But uh, yeah, very unique, and this CD is apparently hard to find because just out of curiosity, I looked on Amazon. And there's only one person selling it, and they want what did they say, 22 bucks for it, which is probably just because they're the only one selling it. So they probably think it's a rare and valuable collectible when it's probably not. Uh, yeah, this was on an indie label. Um, 2003 is the date. So yeah, if their stuff is on Spotify or streaming online, give them a try. Snow Cone, S N O C O N E is how it's spelled. So yeah, give them a try. So anyway, yeah, as I said, uh, a bunch of crap, a few keepers in here, as usually seems to be the case, a, a wide variety of stuff. And yeah, as I said, some of them are, you know, they seem good enough at what they do. It just wasn't my cup of tea. And as I've mentioned before, I kind of don't know, you know, in that respect, I don't know why I do this bargain bag feature just because I listen to so much music that something really has to be unique and special for it to grab me. But hey, you know, a lot of these, they just end up in the goodwill anyway. I, you know, somebody else might want to come along and pick them up for whatever reason. Some people I know uh, pick up weird, obscure stuff just to sample elements of it in music that they make themselves. Uh, so, hey, everybody's out there looking for something, yeah. is the way I like to put it. But anyway, on to the bargain bags, the first of the two bargain bags here. Let's see what kind of gems or junk is in these bags here. Okay, so I'm just going to pop the staples on this. Hope not to mangle my hand too much here. Don't have all this. The more efficient way. So let's see what's in here. Starting off with... Oh! George Huntley! This is one that I actually have. Uh, there's a group that I enjoy called the Connells. And this guy is was a member of the Connells, and this is his solo side project. This is a great CD. Let's see, who can I give this to? I'm not sure if Noah's going to be up uh, into this kind of thing, but this is definitely going to find a home for a friend of mine. Yeah, cool. 
it's the second time I think that I found something that I actually own inside one of these bargain bags. So, yeah. Uh, Adrian Shaw, Look Out is the name of this uh, album. Yeah. Kind of looks like maybe it's singer songwriter, although the uh, picture of his studio in the back uh, shows computer and stuff. So, I mean, not that that really means anything, but could possibly have some electronic elements in it. So, give that a try. And we have, well, this is interesting, possibly uh, classical, Kettle Bay. Albert W. Kettlebay. We'll see what's there. Very uh, out of the ordinary kind of thing here. Then we've got Corinne West. Uh, the Promise is the name of the album. 2009 Make Records is the label. Yeah, kind of looks singer-songwriter-ish. Give that a try. We've got... Oh, here's actually an artist that I recognize the name of. Martina McBride, country singer. Uh, Emotion is the name of the album. Yeah, might as well give that a try. I've actually, uh, a couple of the albums that I had in that uh, big freebie bundle uh, recently, Blake Shelton and one of the uh, Kenny Chesney albums I decided to keep, so okay. Uh, then we've got 1090 Club, I guess is the name of the uh, band. SOS is the name of the album. I have no idea what this is either. So. As I said, that's what the joy is with these bargain bags. Is, uh... And then the last CD in the bargain bag is The Dead Trees, Fort Music EP. So, yeah, give that a try. Why not? So that is the first bargain bag. Okay, now the album I wanted to talk about today is uh, a bit of an unusual one. Normally, you might notice on these bargain bag segments, I usually go for the albums that are more obscure, lesser known, uh, the ones that are in the bargain bins at the CD stores for good reason, because nobody knows what the hell they are. Uh, but this one, uh, you probably recognize, I'm, almost everybody out there I'm sure recognizes the name of the artist and probably the name of the album. It's a pretty well-known album. It's just uh, a lot of people might have stopped at that great big hit single that it had and not gone any further. And in my opinion, they're really missing out. Uh, this is the debut album by Hanson. It is called Middle of Nowhere. And yes, the song Mbop was the big, huge hit single, as I mentioned. Uh, it got, yeah, it got way overplayed, in my opinion. I mean, it's it's catchy enough and all, but uh, yeah, it was kind of a nonsensical chorus. The song was very, very bubblegum pop kind of stuff. Uh, so it probably led, and you know, honestly, I can understand how it would lead a lot of people to think that the rest of the album is just like it. I mean. You know, they, a lot of people probably dismiss these guys as one-hit wonders, you know, bubblegum, teeny bopper pop stuff that nobody will remember a year later. Well, unfortunately, that single Mbop was very misrepresentative of the rest of the album. And honestly, those of us in the know who bothered to pick up the album and listen to the rest of it could tell, as I could, that these guys were in it for the long haul. They had some talent in, in their music. I mean, they wrote pretty much all the stuff themselves, by the way. Uh, those of you who might not know it. Uh, but yeah, Mbop was, as I said, you know, really, really cheesy. And there was a ballad on there called I Will Come To You, and that was also very syrupy, very sappy. But aside from those two songs, I mean, if you've never listened to this album all the way through, you don't know what you're missing. I mean, these guys, you know, you picture them here. The last thing you would think that they could do is some, you know, good muscly blues rock kind of stuff. But uh, there were a couple of songs on here uh, Look at You is uh, one of them, and uh, another one that's kind of uh, slower, but the, along in the same kind of a blues rock kind of vein, is Speechless. And those two songs, I mean, these guys, it showed their talent at that early age. I mean, you know, having talent at this early age, as I said, I knew that they were, they were in it for the long haul, and they were really going to show us stuff. They're still recording, if you might not have kept up with them, they're still recording. They've put out five or six albums uh, so far. And in my opinion, they've gotten better with every album. They might be one of the more inconsistent bands from album to album. Some of the albums are really good. Some of the albums are not all that great. You know, consistency quality-wise has not been their strong suit. But honestly, they write good songs. They have talent. They play their instruments well. They, they sing really well. The one who's actually shown the most improvement over the years is Zach, the youngest brother. On this album, he, he took on a couple of lead vocal duties and... He was not very good. Those songs, in my opinion, were 
probably the biggest clunkers on the album, but I mean, to, to listen to him now, I never would have imagined that he would get so great at, uh, especially at singing, but yeah. Uh, let's see, any other good songs on here? Uh, Yearbook is a really good ballad. I mean, a lot of ballads you'd expect from the kids this age, the ballads to be, oh, I want you to be my girl, that, you know, that really sappy love song kind of stuff. Listen to Yearbook. That's a very different take on a ballad. Uh, very different subject matter for, for you know, teen and teenage kids, you know, kids in their early teens. But yeah, this album is just, it's great from pretty much from front to back. As I said, a couple of uh, clunkers and a couple of meh songs on it. But honestly, you you do a lot worse than Middle of Nowhere by Hanson. If you haven't given it a try, give it a try, uh, especially if you haven't gone past Mbop. It made me stick with these guys, you know, all these years since. I haven't missed picking up an album of theirs. They've just gotten, on average, better and better. So give these guys a try. Okay, now on to the final bargain bag of the day. Let's see if I can tear it open with uh, a little more speed. That's just not going to work, okay? Screw it. Uh, okay, here we go. First CD out of these seven it is Out of Here. It's Out of Here by Corduroy or Corduroy by Out of Here. I'm not sure which is the uh, the artist and which is the uh, album name. Oh, the label is called Acid Jazz, so I wonder if this might actually be Acid Jazz. Looks interesting enough, uh, 1994. So yeah, definitely give that a try. And then we've got The Somethings, Music from 27th Street. 2002 Dance Baby Records. So yeah, give these guys a try. Then we've got Zoba, A New Breed. Yeah, give that a try. I don't have a whole lot to comment on with these uh, regards to these CDs because I don't know what they are. And I'm sorry, sorry to disappoint you in that respect. And then we have uh, Glenn Scott, an album called Without Vertigo. Looks like it could be interesting. 1999 Sony Music. I hate to pigeonhole African American artists or, or African whatever uh, nationality they are as being R&B, but I'm kind of expecting R&B. I hope that doesn't make me prejudiced in some way. Oh, Michael Fredo. I, <laughs> I actually, <coughs> excuse me, I actually had this CD a long time ago and got bored with it and traded it in. So uh, this is, I guess this will be a second chance for me to give it a try. And this is uh, basically teen pop. I, I don't know if he was in his teens when he recorded this, but uh, yeah. From the late 90s, yeah, 1999, you know, teen pop, R&B, dancey kind of stuff. So not bad it's just i got bored with it as i said so uh then we have rattlebone uh it is a five song ep might as well give rattlebone a try and then the last cd from the bang is shaka man d jazz match you got me. Right, this. So, uh, yeah, looks like there's a lot of interesting stuff to uh, check out in this bargain bag. So, uh, and what two or three that I was familiar with, uh, two from actually owning before. Uh, actually, the, the George Huntley I still own, actually. But anyway, yeah, that is it for this bargain bag for this month of uh, June. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I appreciate the feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter and you can find the link to my Twitter feed in the description below. So check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and honestly, they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.